What's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more news on Marvel's Avengers and it's officially been a few days since the original release date for this game hit. That's right, Marvel's Avengers was originally slated to be released on May the 15th of this year but due to reasons unknown was pushed back to September the 4th, which is kinda ironic considering the fact that another AAA Marvel game in the form of Spider-Man was also released in the month of September two years ago. We started off pretty slow in regards to updates on this title but things are gradually getting better as we get closer to the new release date that's about 4 months away. Way. Even though Square and Crystal Dynamics have been very specific on when and where they choose to reveal new details about Marvel's Avengers, it hasn't stopped one developer from going above and beyond the Call of Duty to answer some of our questions. And he seems to be answering more of our questions, so we're gonna break it down. Now, before we get started on the video, I gotta give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, TubeBuddy. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views, and the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than 1,000 subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video. So as I was saying guys, Marvel's Avengers League Combat developer has pretty much been adamant about explaining how the gameplay mechanics and gear system will work in the upcoming game. Crystal Dynamics has gone on record about how one of their main goals is to have all the heroes play and feel how you expect them to going above and beyond to make each Avengers feel authentic. And based on what I've seen, I'm loving it. I love how the developers have been putting all these details into some of the moves, and I like how you'll be granted the ability to craft your own skill trees and utilize certain abilities during co-op missions. All of it sounds great on paper, but we have yet to see these promises be showcased in actual video game footage. Exactly how is the story co-op going to be played compared to that of the Warzone missions? And how is Traversal going to work for each Avengers member? These are things that really need to be answered because they're going to determine if the fans should pick up the game or not. In the most recent updates, Vincent Napoli, the lead combat designer, took to Reddit to answer some of these questions, and one of the most major things he slightly harped on was Captain America's traversal and combat mechanics. Now, I'm pretty certain that he isn't at liberty to answer every question, especially since it makes his publishers look bad given the fact that they've been doing an abyss job at explaining things, but he talked about how the Hulk clings to walls as opposed to running on them in the more traditional sense like Captain America can, and I think we were all fairly surprised after reading that last part regarding Cap. It's something that really excites us because we all know Captain America is one of the most versatile members in the group. Although he's extremely powerful, he can pull off some of the most graceful maneuvers such as flips and kicks, and he also is proficient at parkour, which I had a nagging suspicion that Vincent will be hinting at. Vincent posted this response 5 months ago, and a few months later someone asked if Cap could run on the walls Prince of Persia style or as the mechs do in Titanfall. And to that, Vincent replied saying, and I quote, Captain America's wall run is a set distance, but being able to chain them together by jumping back and forth and double jumping, pole swinging, etc. makes it really friendly. A well-timed double jump off a wall run can also be used to re-trigger the wall run. His navigation is really flexible and active. He basically has lots of little maneuvers that let him hop around the environment and manipulate the space more than any other character. And yeah, his combat slash ability style is very acrobatic. When he's dodging slash evading, the movements are very concise, quick, and economical, but his combat abilities are very different. We wanted to make it feel like his acrobatic prowess is where he derives a lot of his strength and power from in combat. For example, him being able to do a running B-twist jump and shield toss is what helps make the throws so powerful, or being able to throw his entire body literally into a kick, but then catch himself and follow up the leg sweeps, etc. Honestly, I think it really is this combination of equal parts agility plus strength that gives this combat style a unique feel. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. So reading this has me super excited because it shows that Cap's gameplay is going to be more flexible than I originally thought. The fact that the developers are going that in depth with all the mechanics for each Avengers member is absolutely insane. Throughout the years, the MCU has strongly emphasized how thorough Captain America is when it comes to his acrobatics, 
In a game that tries to showcase these abilities is Captain America Super Soldier, a game that features some pretty prolific gameplay mechanics for Cap but was poorly executed due to being rushed, which is the most common case for movie tie-in games. You heard me mention how the most sloppily implemented feature in that game was the parkour system. You're able to scale walls, but it's so minimal and hardly responsive it's barely in the game, which is a shame because the animations were cool. It's something I wish the developers over at Sega and Next Level Games would have worked on more because it just adds more complexity to Cap's gameplay. But now it looks like Crystal Dynamics is going to take this concept and completely turn it on its head like different jumping chains and the pole swinging which is also something we saw in Super Soldier. So I'm just gonna assume off the bat that we're gonna be swinging from bars and whipping around corners in platforming segments for Captain America. I specifically like how Vincent mentions that a well-timed double jump can be used to re-trigger wall runs. That's something that I can see the players going absolutely crazy with because it warrants muscle memory and total execution. And I'm liking the fact that the maneuvers won't just be limited towards strictly platform traversal mechanics. It'll also be incorporated into the combat to help us evade as well as chain together unique attacks. I'm thinking that if I do certain flips, the animations will change depending on the way Cap sets up an attack, and it'll be up to you to position him correctly to pull off those said attacks. You can really tell that Vincent and the other devs are really trying to hammer home exactly how agile the character can be. I really like the example he gave when he mentions that Cap can do a running B twist or as it's formerly called a butterfly twist to add more force to his shield throws, and how you can add this to your kicks and punches as well. It kinda makes me think back to what he said about Iron Man's gameplay in his last post a few months ago, like how the different animations will be very flexible based on how you do things on the ground or in the air. It has me thinking that Cap can perform your standard powerhouse moves but he can switch over to a more acrobatic style to make those attacks just as powerful. If you go back to the game, Gameplay demonstrations from last year's Tokyo Game Show, you can see Captain America doing jumping attacks that transition into the butterfly twist attack that Vincent mentioned in the Reddit post, and you see him launch himself shield first in the form of a dive. Judging by the fact that all of these impressive moves were pulled out by someone who most likely didn't know how to play the game, leads me to believe that Cap's moveset is going to be incredibly robust and I can't see all the combos that the more skilled players can pull off with him. Like he's probably going to be able to do wall runs that transition into ground pounds and everything. Speaking of mood sets, I wanted to briefly do a breakdown on the information we got via the official Twitter page for Marvel's Avengers. Since Vincent gave us more insight in regards to how these characters' move sets will work, I wanted to go back and sort of go over some of the heroic abilities and what they do. If you remember last year in September, the official Twitter handle for this game tweeted out an entire month's worth of details for each Avengers member. But I can imagine that this went by unnoticed by a lot of people, because if we're going to be honest, not everyone likes to be on social media like that. But some of the key things they went into specific details about were the heroic moves, which are basically special moves each Avenger will need to combat enemies during certain scenarios. As you may have noticed in the A-Day trailer, each Avenger member will have up to three heroic moves in the form of Support, Assault, and Ultimate that will all operate on a cooldown timer. The first hero they go over is the Hulk. The tweet says, and I quote, When Dr. Banner relinquishes control of the demon within, the result is the catastrophic bone shaker ability. He repeatedly slams his fist into the ground to taunt all challengers. Hulk draws all nearby enemy attention to aggro and is overcome with the inner rage that bolsters his defensive strength. Teammates who witness this show of aggression gain their own gameplay buffs so that you can jump into the fray and fight alongside the Gamma Field Companion. And we've seen this move performed on some of the henchmen in the A-Day gameplay footage, but we didn't know all the different buffs you get from it. But now we know that it's going to increase Hulk's defense and it'll boost an unknown stat for any Avengers member that fights alongside him. And this is something that I think Marvel Ultimate Alliance fans are going to love because it makes you want to see all the different possibilities of putting certain teams together. Anyways, the tweet goes on to mention Hulk's Gamma Rush, which is considered an Assault Heroic. It allows him to quickly smash his way through a group of enemies, using his Gamma Rush to become a human battering ram. To add insult to injury, Hulk will grab the first enemy encountered during the attack and slam him into the ground at the end of the charge, inflicting massive damage and staggering nearby opponents. As for his ultimate heroic, enemies outside of his immediate reach may think they're safe, but they still have to contend with Hulk's most powerful attack, the Thunderclap. When he smacks his hands together, it unleashes a shockwave of devastating concussive force. Next up is Iron Man, and one of the main things the page mentions is his assault heroic. It says, and I quote, Iron Man harnesses his armor's functionality, assisting the team and blasting enemies from afar. Powering up his arc reactor, Iron Man unleashes his assault heroic, the Unibeam, which fires a continuous beam of concentrated muon particle energy, destroying anything in his path. 
Now, they don't go into specifics about the other abilities, but we do get a brief look at one of the ultimates from the game overview trailer in the form of the Smart Rockets. By pressing the left and right bumper buttons, you can fire a spread of secret rockets that can target up to five enemies, and they inflict collateral damage on detonation. So any explosive object that the rockets hit will quadruple the damage. Anyways, up next we have Black Widow, who's said to be just as effective from a distance as she is up close and personal. For her assault heroic ability, she has the Widow's Bite, which leverages her iconic gauntlets to quickly blast a sphere of electrical energy at her target. With Natasha, stealth is the name of the game. Activating her support heroic ability will cloak her and any nearby team member in a field of invisibility, which allows them to take advantage of an enemy's unaware state, performing critical attacks in safety and with style. And that's all we have for Natasha, but the next Avenger we have is Thor, whose heroic abilities we've seen in action, but just like the Hulk, we didn't know about the effects and buff details. For his assault heroic, he has the Warrior's Fury, which allows him to channel the Odin Force to imbue himself with limitless lightning strikes that arc out to assault nearby enemies. While Warrior's Fury is active, all attacks are also charged with electrical energy and inflict additional damage. Upgrading this ability will eventually channel the protective force to nearby allies. The blast itself inflicts massive damage, but the real power of this heroic comes in its diversity. Players are able to select which realm Thor travels to when using the Bifrost, each realm changing the effect of the blast upon its return. And we saw this during the A-Day trailer where the heroic ability Warrior's Fury pretty much increases your attack power after it's executed. I noticed that this buff lasts a pretty long while since the lightning continues to strike the surrounding enemies. What I like about this new detail is that it pretty much explains how the skill tree will affect your pre-existing heroics, like when you continue to upgrade this ability it will provide your teammates with additional coverage from enemies. As for the Bifrost Heroic, I'm a little confused on if it's an upgrade effect to the Warrior's Fury Heroic or its own thing, because they talk about diversity as if they're still explaining Thor's Assault Heroic, but I think it's its own thing though. Anyways, if you notice in the Embrace Your Power trailer, we get a very brief shot of Thor using the Bifrost on AIM soldiers. The tweet says triggering the Bifrost calls upon the gatekeeper of Asgard and does what one would expect. Thor travels to another realm and then controls where a powerful torrent of cosmic energy strikes upon his return. I take it that it will be his ultimate heroic attack since it seems to be a very devastating move, not to mention that they've already shown his support heroic. If I'm not mistaken, it's called the God Blast where Thor essentially lifts all the surrounding enemies up with whirlwinds before blasting them with a bolt of lightning. I ain't gonna lie, he's looking like he can be one of the top tier characters in the group and I for one cannot wait to play with him. But anyway, it's the last character we have to go over is Kamala Khan. Her assault heroic has the unique ability of being able to stop an enemy in his tracks and even send them flying. Kamala focuses all of her energy into her right hand, creating a massive palm able to shove even the most formidable enemies with astonishing force. Her ultimate heroic and biggin pushes her polymorphic ability to its limits by dramatically increasing her size and strength for a short duration. Kamala towers over the entire battlefield while in biggin gaining access to an all new suite of attacks and abilities. And not only is she highly resistant to damage while in biggin, all of her attacks also benefit from dramatically increased impact and damage, causing even the most sturdy of opponents to seem defenseless. So yeah, we have a pretty substantial amount of information regarding all of these heroes abilities, including their heroics. For some reason, they didn't really go into detail regarding Cap's heroics. All I know is that he has an assist heroic called Steamroller where he does a spin before launching his shield at multiple enemies, and his ultimate heroic where he slams his shield to the ground to cause a shockwave to surrounding enemies is called the Brooklyn Brawl. But there are still no details on his assault heroic. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you think about all of these abilities in the comment section below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.